Hello there, Ray here, and today guys, I would like to show you a new trick that came out with 1.15 Minecraft. Using this, you can go from another portal in the overworld directly on top of the bedrock in the nether. If you happen to join us during our testing with the viewers, you're probably there when we came across this. That's the time that you guys can join me on our server as we test out new things. And we do them every Wednesday and Friday. So make sure to turn on your YouTube notifications so you can learn about the cool things that we come across as much of it never makes it into an actual video. I also notify you guys through my Twitter as well as the Protect Community Discord. And you can always find those links down below. And if you ever miss out on any of the streams, the videos are always saved on my Twitch channel. So you can check them out there later on. The way we came across this is a bit strange. We noticed this trick right after they did a change to nether portals in 1.15. And this is where they're trying to optimize nether portals and how entities go through them. So with the change, whenever an entity goes through, there's going to be less calculations to figure out where the mob should end up. And this in turn will mean less lag in general when anything is going through the nether portal. But during our testing, we were doing some testing on top of the bedrock and we built ourselves a nether portal up here and we just faked one in using a command. But this nether portal linked us with one down below. Well, that's pretty normal, but when we go back through this nether portal here, we actually end up above the bedrock. So it's now possible to link your nether portals to a nether portal that is above the bedrock. So if I go ahead and just remove this one, and you can go ahead and do this in survival. And I'll show you guys how you could do that. So your first start in the overworld where you want the portal to link up with. So you make your portal. This is the one which will take you to the top of the bedrock once we're done. You go through that portal. It will generate a portal in the nether. Go ahead and remove this one by either breaking the obsidian or breaking it with some lava. Then what you want to do is dig yourself all the way up through all this nether rack until you reach the bedrock that is at the top of the nether. Then you want to go ahead and break your way around here until you find a spot where you can see the topmost layer of the bedrock. So if I peek in this hole right here and look at this very, very top piece right here, point my pointer at it and then pull up F3. Right here it says I am currently looking at a block which is at Y level 127. This is exactly what you want to have. Now in the past I have shown a couple different ways where you can get on top of the bedrock inside of the nether. You guys can check out that video if you want to know some other methods but I'll show you a simple way you can do it. So what you need is a ladder and an ender pearl and then get as close as possible to that Y127 block of bedrock. Then place in your ladder and then you want to climb up it and get your head as close to the bedrock as possible. Then you just want to throw one ender pearl kind of at an angle like this and keep pushing forward while holding crouch. And now you're on top of the ladder and from here you can go ahead and jump up and you'll be on top of the bedrock. Now from here you can go ahead and build in your nether portal. Now when you put in this nether portal you want it to be relatively close to the nether portal that you came from. So here's our old one down here. Try not to go more than 16 blocks away from it when putting in your new one. But you can put it at any Y height you want to. So you can put it as high or as low as you want. So you can put it like way up here. Or you can even put it just on top of the bedrock. Now before when it came to putting nether portals above bedrock, you weren't really allowed to do it. The game would never ever check this high to see if the player should even go into another portal of this size. And the highest the game would check would be at this height. So you'd have to have another portal block at this height in order for the player to end up on top of the bedrock. But with this new change to 1.15, you don't have to do any bedrock breaking in order to get the player up above the nether every single time. So I'll go ahead and light a portal though. Like I said, you can put it at any Y height you want. Now this portal will link up with the one in the overworld. We can go ahead and test it. So if I hop through here, I'll be sent to the one in the overworld, the one that was here by the ice. Yep, worked good. But now I can go back through this one. And since we destroyed the nether portal that was down low, it will put us into another portal that is above the bedrock. So let's go ahead and test it. Go into this nether portal and voila, I am up here inside of this nether portal that we just built. So no need to do bedrock breaking and you can have a you can have an easy way to get back here on top of the bedrock. Now this is very useful in a lot of circumstances when it comes to survival as there's no mobs that will spawn up here unless you place down blocks. So if you want to keep like pigmen or gas which are probably the worst from spawning up here in this new area just make sure when you place down blocks to remove any random blocks that are kind of in the area where mobs can spawn on top of. And if you have nether portals like this make sure to come in and place something that's redstone that will prevent mobs from spawning something like buttons. Now gas won't be able to spawn up here and then you don't have to worry about them shooting at you. So now you're pretty much in a peaceful nether situation. 
you can roam around the top without anything ever bothering you. So you might say, well, why do I want to even be up here? Well, you can use the main property of Nether Portals, which is to travel faster in the overworld. So for every one block you travel here in the Nether, it's going to equate to moving eight blocks in the overworld. So if I would travel 100 blocks away from the center portal and place a new one in, I'm going to be 800 blocks from the original location in the overworld. So this is where I am in the overworld, about 8,000 blocks away. And all you have to do is hop through this portal, go out this one, and then travel only 100 blocks. So let's go ahead and just do that. So this is 100 blocks. And then by having another portal over here, we can travel a total of 800 blocks in the overworld just by traveling 100 blocks in the nether. So that nether portal was about 8,000 blocks from spawn. So we come on this one and we are 800 blocks away from the original place. So this is going to make it very useful to have your nether hub situated above the bedrock because you don't have to really do any clearing or worrying about gas or any other mobs affecting your transportation. This is also a very nice place to start building stuff like ice paths because you have a nice area to work with. You can even build piston bolts like we did on the Protec SMP server. And you've probably seen me use it. That's where we have the longest piston bolt in Minecraft on that server. So it's very useful. This also gives you a really nice place to fly between locations with Elytra because you got plenty of vertical room to take off. And you can also fly quite high and then just coast the rest of the way. Now if you do get bored of the portal above the bedrock, you can always have it take you back down below just by breaking this one. Once it's broken, then you'll have to use a different method to get below the bedrock. Like go to a different nether portal to go into overworld and back to its location. Or you can put all your stuff into like your ender chest. And then from there you can go ahead and uh, kill yourself. That way you can get off of the bedrock ceiling. Now it is possible to break this nether portal after the player has left it. Meaning that once your player has teleported away, then the portal will break. So the way you want to do this is you want to have a pressure plate that when the player is standing on it, it'll be kind of like a dead man switch. So as soon as the player leaves the pressure plate, it will activate. So we can tell it when the player leaves this dimension. What we want to do is put a torch right here on the side, put it into a block, and then this block will go into a dispenser, which will have lava inside of it. You can also put TNT inside of it. It's up to you. So we go ahead and put the dispenser in, put the lava in. Now you can go ahead and do this in survival. You want to just make sure you're staying on the pressure plate, also getting teleported by this. And then when you leave, then it will go ahead and destroy the portal. So once in the overworld, you can go ahead and throw some items through and this will load it. Otherwise, once the player leaves the nether dimension, everything will freeze, including our little device we made. So we throw a couple items through that will load it, not give it enough time for the lava to break the actual nether portal. And then we can go ahead and hop through it ourselves. And now we should be placed into a different nether portal. Yeah, we were. We were placed over here. This one was the nearest one that the game found. And that one was automatically destroyed by our little device. You can see how the lava came out, destroyed it. So keep that in mind when putting in these nether portals. The game is going to try to send the player to the closest nether portal. So since we broke the one down below, it couldn't send you to this one. And we also broke the one above it. So it couldn't send us to this one either. So the next closest one that was available is this one over here. And that's where we were sent. And it will do the search up to 128 blocks away from the original portal. So you want to keep the distance between the original portal and the portal that you put in. So distance between this portal that you faked in as well as the original portal which the game put in. You want to keep the distance between the two as small as possible. That way if the game doesn't find this one, it will find that one rather than some other nether portal that is underneath of the bedrock. This makes it a little bit tricky if you're like a multiplayer server where people are putting down nether portals all over the place. But if you happen to have a base that's kind of far away from people, you can easily do this without having to worry about it taking you to the wrong location. So after seeing this change, we thought maybe it's possible to make the game generate nether portals above the bedrock if there is no other place to put them inside of the game. We actually test this during the stream. We filled in a large area, hoping that the game would end up putting another portal up here. But when it comes to generating the first and initial another portal, it will not place it above the bedrock. Very similar to like we've seen in past versions. This means it's not possible to get the nether portal to like generate inside of the bedrock, which is the reason why we're testing this. It'd be a new type of bedrock breaking method if it did work. But unfortunately, this does not work. At best, the game will generate another portal at this location here, 
which would end up putting it down here after it destroyed these blocks. And I already did a video about this type of bedrock breaking. But that's only possible if you went ahead and removed at least one layer of bedrock in order to give it a place for another portal to spawn in. Overall, it's a very cool trick to use in your single player worlds, even on multiplayer servers. And I'm excited to take advantage of it on the Protech SMP server when we do update to 1.15. Because this means we can also transfer items on top of the nether without having to worry about going down below. So we can have like a minecart full of items come out of this nether portal, travel over to that one and go back inside of that one. Now this change might not be an intended feature. Although we did play around with it a lot during our snapshot stream, we didn't really want to publicize it until the full release of 1.15.1, which is out today by the way guys. This new full release fixes a couple different crashes and also improves rendering of chunks. And you can check out the full bug report down in the description. I hope you guys really enjoyed this trick and be sure to tell your favorite Minecrafters about this so they can use it in their very own worlds. And I would love to hear any other ideas you guys have for these portals. I would like to thank you guys for watching and bye bye.